it's Chris Doherty, Doherty Properties. Everywhere I go, breakfast, lunch, dinner, agents, everywhere. And the question that I get again and again and again, it's just on with a news reporter, are we in a bubble? Are we in a bubble in the United States, in Massachusetts and in New Hampshire? I'm gonna answer that today for you. Now, there's one thing that we know, it's that if you want to analyze a market, you have to look at the history of the markets. So in this case, I want to walk you through factually and emotionally what happens during a real estate cycle. You always know, say that the real estate market, like so many markets, the stock market, the economy, they go up and down. So I want to bring you back to 2008. At that point in time in 2008, we were in what we would call a depression. And the reason we were in a depression is that one, the spirit of the country, the psychology of the country was that things were so bad. People were losing their homes. They had lost their jobs. They had lost a huge amount of money on their stock portfolios. The mentality of the people was a depressed state. And factually, we're at bottoms. GDP was low, jobless rates were high, everything was tough, people were losing money, it was a tough time. And so what ends up happening is this, the psychology changes and we hit bottom and optimism emerges from a psychological point where people start to say, oh, we've hit bottom and we're coming back. 2008 was really that bottom and it starts to come back. And what you start to see in the data is that things start to normalize, prices stop falling, people get more confident, they start to re-enter the market. So their psychology is a sense of optimism. We're, at the, we're out of it, we're out of the depression and it's cleared and now we're climbing up. Then what happens is people start to feel a little bit better. And as they feel a little bit better, they start to re-engage in the markets. And when they re-engage in the markets and the residential sale market, they start to buy, okay? Sellers start to feel better because gains start to come back. And a lot of the people who had a problem lost their homes, but the people that could now sell are starting to say, okay, we can sell and we're getting out of it. We're doing better than we were a year ago. As that market starts to gain some steam, the psychology of the country starts to feel even better. Things are starting to move. You see the jobless numbers come down. You see um, people's earnings are going up. You see the consumer spending starts to get better and the psychology of the country is improving, okay? In this process, you have builders and builders play a huge role in the residential housing market because they are a, the biggest driver of supply. If you don't create or build anything new, your supply stays stagnant. So you have contractors as this is happening. They start to get confidence and they start to look for and buy projects because they feel like now we can start to make some money and they start going through permitting processes, okay? It's like this gang, you hit bottom, and the numbers start to climb as the psychology of the country, the region, the state starts to improve. And little by little it climbs and people feel better and better, okay? What inevitably happens in a real estate cycle is this euphoria starts to take place. Everybody's making money. Everybody's excited. The real estate brokers, we do great. The builders do great. The sellers are making more money than they ever did. Buyers are paying a lot, but they feel good too because they're working, they're getting low rates, and we get to this state of euphoria. But what we normally happen in a bubble and what's happened in the cycles in the past is that a bubble is really a result of this psychological phenomenon results in oversupply of housing. Because through this, everybody gets excited. The builders start getting permits. They start taking on these big projects, 20 homes, 50 homes, 100 homes. The big national players get in. They start to do these huge neighborhoods and the supply becomes a problem. And that's when the bubble bursts because now there's so much supply on the market and there's not enough buyers. And now the psychology and the market starts to change and they go hand in hand. 
an economic cycle is a psychological cycle of our country and of our region, okay? Because what happens impacts feelings and emotions. So as we hit oversupply, now what happens is, and there are fewer buyers, prices start to naturally decline. So everybody starts to get a little bit fearful and anxious. They start to say, geez, I got these projects out here. I'm getting nervous. Maybe it's just a temporary pullback. Now it doesn't happen. Appraisals start coming back lower and it starts to slide down that anxiety turns to deep worry and then that deep worry turns to depression and panic okay gang right now we do not have a supply problem in the united states and we don't have it in massachusetts we don't have it in the merrimack valley and we don't have it in greater lowell our market is normalizing because we had a couple of things happen to us COVID was huge for slowing down the growth because when COVID happened, a lot of builders slowed down. They became a little bit risk averse. There was some uncertainty in the middle of this climb and a worry came over the country in a different type of way. But right now we're seeing renewed consumer confidence. People are feeling good because they can go back out. They go to the movies, they go to restaurants, they go to shops. There's some worry now, you know, Wall Street today is talking about worried about COVID and Delta variants and that that's still a reality. But you still have this supply issue, but the other way, we just don't have enough of it. So there are some potential headwinds. What happens in the foreclosure market and does the government step in? And if those foreclosures hit the market, does that cause oversupply and how many can it absorb it? Do the permits that have been out, is there a huge number of permit jumps that start in the next couple of weeks or months and that helps bring on a builder supply in the next six to nine months? It's possible, but we haven't seen it yet. So gang, no, we're not in a traditional real estate bubble. What we are in is in a once in a lifetime cost inflation jump, once in a generation where the cost of everything is going up. Okay, because we're printing so much money, because we're trying to stimulate the economy, the value of the dollar is less, and everything is going up. Cars are going up. Go to Home Depot, go to Lowe's, all the products are up. Go buy your grocery store, they're up. Go to a restaurant, the cost of food in the, the restaurant, you used to buy a sub for $6, now it's $12. You're dealing with an inflation problem, okay? but you are not in a housing bubble, especially in Massachusetts and New Hampshire. In Massachusetts, you can't find any land. So it's hard to shift the inventory right now, okay? It doesn't mean there aren't headwinds ahead. So if you're a seller right now, you should take this and say, listen, first, I wanna sell, but I need to be reasonable with my price, okay? Because while we're not in a bubble, prices are getting so high, that's what's causing a little bit of a slowdown, but if you came lower in price, there are buyers out there. So price it accordingly, okay? The second thing is, is that when you go through this process of you know selling your home, make sure that you have it looking as good as you can. Don't just dump a problem onto the market, get it into good condition because the price being appropriate and the house being in good condition, there are buyers still there because we don't have an inventory problem. So. I think that things are going to continue to move forward over the weeks and months ahead. Everybody is, you know, gets a little nervous when things get high, but we don't have an inventory problem right now. And so if you have any questions, feel free to message me um, here. Feel free to reach out to our office, our staff. We have lots of agents that are here to help you. And I uh, hope that things continue in a positive and optimistic way in Massachusetts, New Hampshire, and the United States. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the days ahead.